Okay, so uh, thank you. This, uh, I was uh, also uh, drafted in rather late into this uh, planetary boundaries uh, uh, endeavor. Um, the uh, Nature, as, long, as well as uh, uh, publishing the article, published a series of, of comments along it online, um, sort of like blogs, really, if you like, um, by, by various people. Um, and uh, it's, uh, and so, so I was sort of, uh, had, a, had a privileged uh, early view of this, of this article, which was very stimulating, and I, I thought I'd sort of share with you some of my reactions to the article um, and some of the, some of the concerns um, I, I have and, uh, and things we need to discuss and hope to get some discussions going, perhaps for the, uh, for, for the discussion time here. And the key question is, on, on the climate boundary, I'm just focusing specifically on um, climate narrowly defined as basically greenhouse-induced warming, um, uh, are we asking the right questions? Um, the sort of frequently asked question which the Planetary Boundaries article um, addresses is, you know, for what level of CO2 should humanity aim? In fact, this was the it's a sort of paraphrase of a title of a um, heavily cited paper by James Hansen um, published uh, uh, in the past year. And where does this question come from? Well, <coughs> um, a long time ago, in 1992, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change uh, stated its ultimate objective was stabilization of greenhouse gas levels at a, at a level which would avoid anthropogenic interference in the climate system. So the obvious question is, okay, you scientists, what is that level? And we've been trying to answer this question ever since. And the problem is, to answer this question, you, uh, you need to answer a related question, which is, you know, if we want to avoid more than two degrees of warming, and this is generally accepted that that's the sort of uh, level of warming we wish to avoid, this means we need to know what's called the climate sensitivity, the equilibrium warming when you double carbon dioxide or equivalent. And the sort of story of research on climate sensitivity is, is a rather sobering one. Back in 1979, the Charney Report gave an estimate of climate sensitivity, three degrees, one sigma range. They didn't call it a one sigma range, but when they went back afterwards and worked it out, it was essentially a one sigma range, 1.5 to 4.5 degrees. In 2007, the fourth IPCC scientific assessment gave an estimate of three degrees with a one sigma range of two to 4.5 degrees. Well, you can see, say we've made some progress, um, a tiny amount of progress, um, but no progress on the upper bound. And um, so what does this mean? Okay, well, you know, if um, the uh, sensitivity is three degrees, then avoiding two degrees means keeping carbon dioxide levels below 445 parts per million. Of course, we could talk about this uncertainty range and so on, and other arguments for keeping it below uh, 445 parts per million, but this immediately raises the question, why is there now this you know, big global campaign, which uh, 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 Joachim's article um, it, uh, will be, no doubt, heavily cited, which will, which will no doubt, uh, uh, be, be citing Joachim's, Joachim's, Joachim's article extensively to establish 350 ppm as the target that humanity should aim for. What worries me is that, I mean, this, this is a big campaign. These guys are, you know, they're serious. Um, they, 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 they really are pushing. Uh, this is the big um, sort of push for Copenhagen. And what worries me, and I've sort of, I made this little cartoon here to sort of, you know, I, I hope uh, Joachim won't mind me sort of you know, giving some... Um, uh, so, sort of a, a little sort of cartoon story about, uh, about how the argument goes. So um, this is just showing you carbon dioxide concentration in the horizontal and the equilibrium warming relative to that Holocene optimum which Joachim described in the vertical. And um, if we take the sort of standard IPCC um, estimate of climate sensitivity, the three degrees, then you follow this line here. So, so this is the sort of three degree climate sensitivity line. Of course, there's uncertainty around that. In fact, um, it's quite funny that I'm presenting the middle estimate because most of my research concerns the uncertainty. But right now, I'm, I'm really just focusing on the, on the central estimate. And um, so, so if we follow up this line, um, that, that essentially corresponds to uh, a, uh, the world as we, as we know it now with, with, with uh, Greenland and Antarctic ice caps intact. But James Hansen has pointed out that if we look at the paleoclimate evidence, and, and Johan uh, showed you one, Johan, sorry, Johan showed you one of uh, the, the, the elements of this uh, uh, paleoclimate uh, evidence, um, you see a, 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 the world when carbon dioxide concentrations were 
um, of the order of five to 600 ppm um, was uh, of the order of six degrees warmer than today, um, implying that you know, there's actually the, the, the actual long-term climate uh, sensitivity, climate response to doubling carbon dioxide is more like six degrees or more like this, this higher curve here. But this is where we need to be very careful. Just because we have a point up here, you might be tempted to say, this is what the, uh, I'm sorry, it's not a little planet like Joachim's, but you know, you can see that we're thinking on similar lines. I need to get uh, better slides. Um, but, um, uh, but, but, you know, would you think that we follow this line? Um, now, it's very important to stress, uh, Johan, I'm sorry, Johan, I keep uh, slipping in. Um, uh, uh, Johan's essay does not, um, does not give this argument, but I fear that it may be quoted as giving this argument, if you see what I mean, which is why I'm, I'm worried about this. Because if I just follow this line here, connecting the present to this six degree sensitivity, then I come to this point, well, I cross two degrees at 350 parts per million. But that argument is wrong, because that's not what the planet does. That's where we are now. The actual argument in Johann's paper is that we will continue in this general direction and then, of course, eventually reach a point where temperatures are high enough that we melt the ice caps and we move up to this other um, curve where we have an ice cap free Earth, but this takes a very long time, that whole process. And then, of course, the concern is suppose our distant descendants decide they don't like a planet, if they're even around then, but suppose they don't like a planet which is six degrees warmer. Of course, if they then reduce carbon dioxide levels, you move back down that way. So this is an example of a, an irreversible change in the system. You can't uh, readily regrow the ice sheets once you've got rid of them. Okay, so the key point here is that on this story, following this sort of hysteresis loop here, which I'm describing, um, 350 parts per million isn't obviously special. It's about halfway to somewhere in the middle of the uncertainty range at which the ice caps might start to disappear. Okay. But this is the frustration which I think a lot of people, James Hansen included, feel about the climate system. It's very hard to say for sure if you go beyond this number of parts per million, there will be a disaster. If you stay this side of it, there won't be. And the problem, of course, is we are engaging with a political uh, uh, system which appears not to respond to any other form of information. Um, and and I, what, I'm, what, I, what I worry about um, is that sort of if we allow um, the environmental movement, if you like, to sort of quote um, Hansen 2009 shows climate sensitivity is six degrees, therefore we have to stabilize at 350, um, we tie ourselves to a very difficult argument to defend what I would call a, a sort of dangerous game. There is this sort of simple argument. The IPCC thought climate sensitivity is three degrees. James Hansen showed it six degrees. So therefore, we have to stabilize at 350. QED, that's what we used to write at the end of our little maths proofs when I was uh, doing maths uh, as a physics undergraduate, you know, quad erat demonstrandum. Um, but some, the, there, is, there is a lot of, you know, it's nice and simple. It's the sort of argument people want. It gives you a straightforward, uh, but the problem is to get an IPCC-like consensus that the climate sensitivity really is six degrees, not three degrees, will, I can forecast this very confidently, take a very long time. And I quote you the, the, the amount of time it's taken us to get to where we are on even the short-term sensitivity. James Hansen would say that's because the IPCC is populated by dinosaurs like myself who take a very long time to do anything. Um, and maybe he has a point, but you know, the strength of the IPCC in many ways lies in its caution. But the other issue is that, of course, you know, this is, these are very long-term targets, and targets applying to some indefinite point in the future um, may have little political traction. And then, of course, there's this issue, well, you know, if we are going to save the ice sheets, maybe we won't actually hit these high feedbacks anyway. 